who uh, loved the man of God. She loved him so much she figured out that uh, because Elijah was an itinerant minister, Elisha was an itinerant minister, she figured out that he had nowhere to lay his head. Uh -huh. I think she might have had him followed and they followed him down to an open field and the grass was his mattress and a rock was his pillow. Uh -huh. Uh, she understood that, that this man uh, uh, was uh, doing the work of God. And so one day she went to her husband and uh, uh, she said her, uh, to her husband, we've got a little extra space if we build up. Why don't we build a room for the man of God? Why don't we build a loft for the man of God? And so they took their time, and he, uh, the, the husband uh, went back and forth with her, uh, I, I, I'm going to assume, and, and dealt with her about the fact that this money was put away for retirement. Uh -huh. they, 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 were, they were to live off of this money so he wouldn't have to work hard anymore. And she said, honey, if we just bless the man of God, uh, I believe everything is going to be all right. Context. Context says, context says that uh, the man of God, uh, after he uh, went there on the next occasion, uh, she said to him after she fed him this time because they would feed him. They, they would feed the man of God when he came to town. And uh, after he ate, he would go somewhere and go to sleep. If, if he was in Norfolk, Virginia, he'd go somewhere under a bridge. Or he'd go somewhere near an armory or uh, try to sleep at a high school uh, uh, or some, somewhere where he could find shelter. Uh, but but, but, but uh, when, when uh, she got wind of it and they built this extra room, this particular day he came and she said, uh, you don't have to go looking for a place to stay. We built you a law. We built you a room. The Bible says they put a bed in it and they put a table and a lamp in it. That's right. uh, and the man of God, and along with Gehazi, his uh, trusty assistant, uh, went up to sleep uh, in the room. I want you to understand that, uh, so first of all, the woman and the man of God fed the man of God. And then they came back and uh, housed them. The husband of this Shunammite woman, I imagine, would say to her, I thought it was enough that we added something to our budget to feed him every time he came to town. The man eats more than me. Come on now. Uh, and then, then, then uh, when he got over himself and built this place for him, the man of God had the assistant come to the woman and say, what is it that you desire? You've been so kind to us. We want to return the favor. Uh, and the woman of God sent a message back, I don't need anything. Uh, we, 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 we're getting by. We're, we're, we're doing well. Everything is okay in our family. We don't need anything. We don't want you to do anything for us. We're just happy serving you. Yeah. Grew up Church of God in Christ. Pa my father, as uh, Dr. Thomas mentioned, uh, my father uh, pastored many years in the Church of God in Christ. And uh, after a while, I became an adjutant to uh, my prelate there in Connecticut. I was the Episcopal adjutant. So I went everywhere the bishop went. I would drive him uh, places and uh, uh, still had an hour to go home when I got him home. And uh, we would fly places together. When he ate off of the left side of his hamburger, I would eat off the right side. That's how close... We got it. And so I understood uh, what, what it was like uh, to be with an itinerant minister and what it was like to be a servant. And these people made themselves a servant to the man of God. They didn't want anything. They didn't want him to pay for anything. His money was no good when he came to town. And so finally, Elisha said, I want to do something for this woman. And he was discussing it with his editor. This adjutant, and he's, he, the adjutant said, well, you know, they don't have any children. And I imagine by, the, by this time, they, they were just okay because they were a mature couple. They were like, we don't need any children. We don't need anything now. We, she, she felt like she was past the flower of her day. But the prophet of God prophesied to her and said, about this time next year, <laughs> uh, you're going to bear a man child. 
Uh, look at somebody say about this time next year. About this time next year. Yes. He dealt with he dealt with this woman in a way that it touched her very soul. She was so intent on believing the word of the man of God that she said to the man of God, don't fool me now. Yes, Mother, yes. You remember they used to say that back in your day? They were saying, don't fool me now. I mean, she put her hand on her hip and said, don't fool me now, preacher. Come on now. You did well up until this point. And I, I believe everything you said up until this point. But, but we tried for a long time, but we couldn't get anything accomplished on our own. How is it that you're going to prophesy to us? And if you prophesy, we're going to go into a spirit of expectation. Yeah. He said, yes, surely as I'm standing before you about this time, <laughs> next year, yes, you're going to bear us. son. Yes. Fast forward, that time next year, she bore a son. <laughs> son yeah. grew up to about a toddler's age, and the Bible says one day out in the field with his father, mm -hmm. got sick. Daddy came and laid him on the prophet's bed. Man. Woman was perturbed. She was beside herself. She was angry because now God has given and God had taken away. We got to understand that even as I said last night, sometimes we lose to win. This woman at this point had gained and now she's losing. But all is not lost. Uh, there was an appointed time when you could approach the man of God, when you could approach royalty. Ruth, uh, I'm sorry, Esther gave us a purview of that when, when, when she was ready to go and fight for Haman's life and fight for the life of the Jews there uh, where, where her husband was king. The Bible says that they said to her, don't go to the king right now because it's not the proper time. And she turned around and said, if I perish, I perish, but I'm going to see the king. Sometimes we get in positions, uh, sometimes we get in situations, sometimes circumstances surround us, and we know it's not time to start praying. You might be on your job at the computer and get some bad news, and you don't want the person on the other side of your cubicle to hear you speaking in tongues. Maybe you're at the service line, and you don't want the folks in line to hear you going off in prayer. And we have to understand that it is never an inappropriate time to approach the throne of grace. Uh, hallelujah. With the Bible, with tells us that when Jesus came that he rent the curtain he tore down the wall of petition and now we had open access to Jesus and we can go to the throne anytime we get ready we don't have to wait till the point in time we don't have to wait till it's church time we don't have to wait till Bible study we don't have to wait till no day prayer we have open access to the throne of God I need somebody to understand here in Dying Word Ministries that here we are, hallelujah, 7.30 in the morning, preacher trying to sleep, get a phone call, hallelujah, and they tell, leave a message and tell me what's going on. And immediately when I got the message, I didn't try to figure out if it was the right time to talk to God, but I fell on my knees and I began to talk to the Lord. And when I called back later on, she said, it's all good. So we all don't know what I'm talking about. Yes. But when they took Pastor into surgery, they took him in because they saw something. And when they got inside of him, they couldn't find anything that they thought they saw before. I'm trying to tell you, we got to go in prayer immediately. Go to the Lord immediately and watch him work it out. Show the show the Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And so... So she upset, angry at the man of God, man. upset with God himself because here her son is in a dying situation. 
So she talked to her husband and said, I'm going to see the...